Friday morning. It's an absolutely beautiful Friday morning. A little chilly to start the day, 28 degrees, but uh, I hear it's going to warm up some, so I'm looking forward to that. Hey, Tanner. Good morning, Paul. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. Like I said, it is a beautiful morning now. The sun's yeah. coming out. and uh, Sun's up. This is the time of year that we see less of Evan because he's only here when it's dark for the show. <laughs> uh, he'll, he'll be on here in the next few weeks. So. Okay. And okay. next Sunday is Daylight Savings Time. So You had to bring that up, didn't you? I did. I did. Uh, you know that's going to be a topic of discussion next week, so I thought I might as well give you a head start on it. Yeah, Randy's already done that once. You a fan of it or not? No. No. I want to go back to when we were kids, <laughs> where your show either came on an hour earlier or an hour later. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. That was your daylight savings time. See, next Sunday is one of my dad's favorite days of the year. Oh. Because he and I are big golfers, so he knows, oh, an extra hour of, of daylight, an extra hour of golf time. Yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. But my mom's on the opposite side. She likes to sleep, so... So where do you stand? Take it or leave it. <laughs> it is what it is. I, mean, I like to sleep, but I also like to golf and be outside and do activities, so... Well, just know I already don't sleep much as is. Yeah, so, so when this comes around, I lose an hour yeah. of sleep now, so I gotta wait till uh, the fall to get yes. an hour back. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Well, enjoy your last week of uh, having Over your hour. Sleep. Yes. So. Well, at least we got some warm weather coming in. We do. 68 degrees tomorrow. That's, uh, yeah. It's got to be close to record high, doesn't it? Uh, I don't know. I have never looked. Yeah. I will I will have to look, and I will report on that later today during the uh, Jonathan morning show. So 68 tomorrow looks like low 60s Sunday. Yeah. Maybe some rain, though, Sunday coming in. Yeah, uh, rain Saturday night, mm -hmm. Sunday, Sunday night, Monday. It's a good day of rain. Yeah, some rain, but uh, I'll take the warm temperatures. No, absolutely. So, you're 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 my weather guy. You're the guy I go to for weather. So, yeah. are we are we done with snow? For no. So later this year? Or no. 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 All right. No. Got to get a little more. You said. Uh, well, I don't know if we'll actually get any accumulation, but uh, like Monday night, there's a chance of rain mixing with snow nah. after nine. So. That's not what I want to hear, Paul. You're letting me down this morning. I know, but at least it's just mixing with yeah, the rain. That's true. So. That's true. That's true. Well, I got a good trivia question for you today. Let's do it. Our special guest today, um, it's going to be a really fun show. We have two first federal family members, and they're also family members within the, themselves. We have Kim Benzie, who is our corporate secretary and HR assistant, and Madison Jackson, who is our escrow specialist. Mother-daughter combo there. I think that's a, that's a first, I think, in first, first federal radio show history, at least since I've been. Yeah, since I've been, been here, yeah. But they're going to be uh, representing Saiwa Zai this morning. they got uh, a big event that I'm not going to spoil right now. No. I'll let them talk about on April 2nd in more detail. But within that event, uh, Michael Winslow, will be on there. Mm -hmm. Familiar with him? Heard of him. Yes? Yeah. Well, you might have seen him on America's Got Talent mm -hmm. recently. So, I want to know, Paul, what year did America's Got Talent begin? You know, I'll, give, I'll give you four choices. I'm not going to just leave you in the dark there. All right. 2002, 2004, 2006, or 2008? All of those are earlier than I thought. So... <laughs> Uh, there's kind of how this is going to go. I'll let All you right. think about it. Yeah. About. Yeah. I'm going to need some time here. All right. I'll report on some sports and some other things and get into our interview, and then you can give right. us a, your best guess. Uh, local sports. Still got a lot of uh, the local basketball teams in action tonight in the semifinals of the sectionals. Fortunately, the Rochester Zebras boys season came to an end earlier this week and lost to Lewis Cass. Yes. Uh, hard fought season, only one senior on the team, so yeah. hopefully a lot of the boys will be back next year, and that always helps when you can keep the same core coming yeah, back. So. I think the professionals call this year a rebuilding year. Rebuilding year, year? yeah. So I think this they lost six be seniors last year. That's always tough to yeah. tough to replicate. So yep. But uh, New Valley Vikings beat West Noble sixty to fifty five earlier this week. They played Northwood tonight. Northwood has a record of twenty two and two. Wow. Pretty good team there. Yeah. So uh, good luck to the Green Valley tonight. Argus beat West Central 79-28 earlier this week. They played lacrosse tonight. It was a record of 12-9. and 
Caston plays North White tonight. North White's got a record of 19 and 3. That should be a really good one. Yes, and in case uh, you didn't hear, we have uh, switched our gears a little bit and we're picking up the Caston game. Oh, great. Tonight. Did not hear so, that. Yeah, Caston Comets will be on the air. Uh, Free game starting about 5.40 and the tip's at 6 o'clock. That's exciting. So, so looking forward to helping the Caston Comets get some uh, yeah. exposure. They've had a strong season uh, so far to date, so yeah. hopefully they can keep it going. Let's hope. And Winnemac plays Rensselaer Central tonight, who's in 12. Okay. So good luck to all those schools. It's a fun time of year. Yes, yes it uh, is. Indiana's definitely a basketball state. So, oh, uh, yeah. This is, a, this is a fun, special time of year. Uh, speaking of basketball, college basketball, we're winding down to, all, to almost a special time of year. Uh, this is the last weekend of the regular season. Next week starts the conference tournaments for the bigger conferences. The smaller conferences are in their conference tournaments right now. Right. And then uh, March Madness will start, and uh, well, we'll know the teams. We'll know selection Sundays in two weeks from Sunday, so we'll know the field of 68 come down. All right, but and, uh, the following Monday, I expect to see your full bracket. Yes, well, we might not be ready by Monday, but we'll be ready <laughs> by uh, about mid that week. But it's been a rough week for the Indiana schools, as every single one of the big schools has lost this week yes. so far. Uh, Purdue and Indiana both lost on. Uh, I want to call them last second shots, but Purdue had a one and a half second left. I think Indiana had two or two and a half seconds left, but neither one of them were able to tie up their games. Now they play each other tomorrow. Ah. At Purdue, that game's at 2 o'clock on ESPN. Okay. So a big game for both teams. Uh, Purdue cannot win the Big Ten now. That's going to go to most likely Wisconsin. Unless they lose Sunday, then Illinois could tie for that. Ooh. And Indiana's fighting now what seems for their tournament tournament lives a little bit. So uh, it's going to be a big matchup, rematch from earlier this year when Indiana beat Purdue by three. So All right. Should be a good one. That's 2 o'clock on ESPN. The lone Big Ten game tomorrow. All the rest are on Sunday. Okay. Butler Bulldogs have a tough test tomorrow. They host Villanova, who's 22-7. and seven. That game's at noon on Fox. And uh, Notre Dame slipped up to Florida State earlier this week. They host Pittsburgh tomorrow, who's 11-19. and 19. That game's at 2.30 on ESPN News. Okay. So a little different. Uh, Notre yeah. Dame been on ACC Network a lot lately. So that one's on ESPN News. So a lot of basketball action going on. If you're looking to do something this weekend, as a basketball fan, shouldn't be hard to... Find some good good games to watch. Not at all. And MLB, uh, yeah. the lockout continues. <laughs> yeah. uh, they announced now that the first two series of the year are canceled, so the season's going to be delayed a little bit. Yeah, I think they said the earliest is now like April 7th. Yeah, they still got to get start. spring training in whenever they can come to agreement on anything. So yeah. we'll see. I don't know. It's uh, Fingers crossed for, you know, 90% it's, it's one of those situations I need to do a better job at educating myself on exactly what's going on. So. Well, uh, yeah. There's a lot, of, a lot of moving parts. A lot of moving parts there. So, well, I got a few tidbits this morning. Not as many as usual, but I do have a few. On this day in 1789, the first U.S. Congress meeting took place. And in that meeting, they declared the Constitution was in effect with nine senators and 13 representatives. Okay. On this day... In many different years, there were a lot of presidents uh, inaugurated on this day. I was starting to make a list, and I was like, that's way too many to list. So yeah. uh, if you're interested in seeing who those presidents were, just go in, on the Google machine there. And <laughs> the Google it machine. <laughs> on this day, 1924, Happy Birthday to You was published by Clayton Sunday. Sunny. Mm. Clayton Sunny. Clayton Sunny. I, I would have guessed. Happy Birthday to You. I don't know what year I would have guessed that. Uh, published. Yeah, I don't know. Probably wouldn't have been 1924. No, probably would have been sooner in my mind. We do have a lot of national days today. Today's the National Day of Unplugging. So throw take, away those devices. Take a, you know, well, not throw them away, away just but take set a break. Them aside. Take a break of those electronic devices. It's also National Employee Appreciation Day, uh, uh, Marching Band Day, mm. Toy Soldier Day, National Dress and Blue Day. National, National Pound Cake Day, International Scrapbooking Industry Day, and National Salesperson Day. Oh man, <laughs> I gotta appreciate these two back here. Plus, because one is their employees and they're both uh, salespeople. I was gonna say, so they double dip there. <laughs> I guess I gotta treat them. Yeah, be nice now. to them. Yep, right. I hope I hope Randy heard that back uh, there. Probably not. <laughs> 
Yes, some upcoming events going on. The uh, Fulton County Historical Powers Association is holding an all-you-can-eat fish and chicken fry tomorrow at the Fulton County Historical Society. That will be from 3.30 to 7.30. Tickets are 11 adults, 11, 11 adults, $11 <laughs> for adults and $6 for children ages 6 to 11. Okay. So if you're looking for a good meal tomorrow and you like chicken and fish, uh, go support the uh, Fulton County Historical Powers Association. Sounds like a good time. No, you guys have been uh, running ads for that. I've heard yes. Time or two. Yeah, it makes me hungry reading the ad. <laughs> me too, and it's breakfast time right I now. I know. But, uh, in the civics pl Civic Players of Logan Sport are putting on Two Witches No Waiting on March 11th and, and 12th uh, at 7.30 on the 11th and 12th and March 13th at 2.30. Mm, this okay. is going to be at the State Theater in Logan Sport. And our receptionist, Heather Carr, gave me a little synopsis of what this is going to be about. Yeah, I'm interested. Uh, Irene Marcus and her sister, Elsbeth, are known far and wide in South Texas as friendly, charitable, and a little eccentric. This is understandable because it is also known they are witches. After their last housemaid suddenly disappears, they are on the hunt for another one. This zany comedy has twists and turns where barn owls spy on people through windows, closets fly open, and even the house itself seems alive. Mmm. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, so if that sounds like something you'll be in interested in, that's next weekend, March 11th and 12th, down in Logan's. Okay. And you can get tickets online. Type in the uh, Civic Players of Logan Sport and right. go right to the website, and tickets will be available. And I'm sure tickets will be available at the door of the night of. Oh, I'm sure. I want to give some flowers this morning to uh, Bryce and Katie Romine, new owners of Dreddy's. Uh, I know they've been in the, on the radio, uh, they heard a snippet earlier this week, and they've been in the, in the Sentinel and the, in the shopping guides all over the place. So, but congratulations to them, and I know they're and very excited. And food is just as good as it was yes, before. Yes, food, food is good. I had, I had it for lunch, uh, I think it was Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday for lunch, so I can't keep my day straight, Paul. Yeah, uh, so congratulations to them. Glad to see uh, somebody uh, keeping it going. So. Mm -hmm. Got some money news. Money news. I kind of already heard you talk about some of this this morning, but... Yeah. I never know what drives it, though. <laughs> I leave that for you guys. Well, the Dow was down yesterday, uh, a little over 96 points. Closed at 33,794.66, and the futures are down this morning... 271, last I knew, at 33,467. Uh, a lot of things going over in Ukraine, it seems like, are, are driving those right now. And That's what I figured, but, you know, I don't know money too well. <laughs> don't know money too well. I leave that for the pros so, but, at First uh, Federal Savings Bank. Like Mr. Dick Belcher always likes to say, when, when he talks about the Dow, it's either going to go up or it's going to go down. So, we'll watch it today and see what it does. We'll is. see. Uh... You a fan of folding folding phones, <clears throat> Paul? Folding phones? Like flip phones? Well, kind of, but the newer versions. Oh, the ones where the screens like break in half. And, kind of, it yeah. looks like that. Well, it looks like they're uh, going to be going mainstream because Apple's working on one. Oh, man. So. I just, I, I'm still trying to find a way to buy the new Motorola flip phone. Yeah. Other than that, I really don't care about them. Yeah, they're they're unique looking. Uh, we'll yeah. see once Apple comes out with theirs. We'll see if it takes off or not. So I think it will. And here's something else interesting that I read this morning: Sony and Honda are teaming together to work on an electric car. Interesting combination. With uh, the goals of opening sales in 2025. They better hurry up. So. Well, they released the concept back in January out in Vegas at okay, a show, so, so... They already kind of have an idea yeah. of what they're going to do now. They just yeah. got to make it work. It's going to be a sport hybrid utility type vehicle of some Ooh. sort, so... All right. So, yeah. The, well, Honda's wanting to become a manufacturer of just electric cars. Their goal as a company is by 2040 to have all the gas... Powered vehicles off the road. Off the road for that. For that, right, right. So right. All the Hondas. It'll be interesting though. Which means Todd's got to buy a new car. <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> perhaps. So it'll be interesting to see see how this comes along in the next few years. Uh, First Federal, we are open today from 8:30 to 5, and tomorrow from 8:30 to noon. We'd love to see you. Whether you come in the lobby or go through our drive-through, 
And if you can't make it to see us today or tomorrow, you can always bank with us online and with our mobile app, which is free to download, no matter if you have an Android or Apple device. Go to your App Store or the Google Play Store. Type in First Federal Savings Bank. Look for the white star with the green background. Hit download. Or install, I should say. You're ready to go. And our ATM is also open 24-7 as well if you need some cash. And we are part of the Money Pass network. So if you're out of town this weekend shopping or, or maybe you're watching uh, some high school basketball and you're wanting to know what ATMs can I use and not get uh, charged a surcharge fee, go to uh, moneypass.com. Type in your zip code, and you can find which ATMs are on the Money Pass Network. Sounds like a good time. And of course, we offer simply free checking accounts and simply free business checking accounts. When you open a new checking account, you get a free gift. Tomorrow's the last day to get the blackout. Oh, buddy. So next Friday, Tanner Lee will have the new gift with him. I will. And that gift is a bento box. What? A bento box. What is a bento box? It's a a uh, variety of compartments, I'll call it, because there's three different ones that you can pack food in. Oh, okay, cool. So it's good if you take your lunch to work or maybe you pack your kids' lunch. There's different compartments in there. There's one that's hmm. for colder food to keep it cold, like a food you store in the fridge or I would say freezer, but then you're going to have to warm it up anyways. Yeah. Um, and, and some other compartments. So I'll bring it in next week. It's easier to show you. All right. And to describe it. I'm not doing a very good job of describing All it. Right. So. it. It's a lunchbox of sorts. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a good way to <laughs> if you're in the market to purchase a home, maybe you re get a refinance on your home, or maybe you're wanting to build a home, we have purchase, refinance, and construction specials still going on through March 15th. You can get $500 off the standard closing cost, and if you're looking to build a home, you can get an eighth rate reduction on the new construction. So, so it's a good deal. Time's running out on that deal, but you got until March 15th. So contact Stacy Wilson and Ben Dalton here in Rochester or Winnemac. And uh, we have originators, of course, in all of our markets, Plymouth, Bremen, Elkhart, Mishawaka, Kosciuszko County, Fort Wayne. So wherever you might be listening or viewing today on Facebook, Absolutely. contact your uh, local First Federal Savings Bank loan originator for more details. Yeah. And uh, if you're looking for commercial lending for businesses, uh, contact Lindy Breeden for more information, 574-223-1716, this is direct line. And if you're looking for our financial services department for more information on planning your retirement, 401k, IRAs, uh, to that nature, contact Mark Blueball or Brian Bell. Sounds like a good time there, too. And you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at FFBanking is our handle on those, uh, LinkedIn, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're the only locally owned bank in Fulton County. We, wanna, we don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. Borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines. We're FDIC insured and an equal housing lender. And our NMLS number is 399927. And that makes us legal. That makes us legal. And on to our special guest segment of the program Kim Benzing and Masson Jackson, both first federal family members and mother and daughter combination, as I subscribed earlier in the program, are joining us. Sayota Zai Ida Mew. Is it Edamu? Edamu. You know what? We've had discussions. It's either, I think it's Edamu. Edamu chapter. Okay. For joining us this morning. Good so, morning. Good Thanks morning. For yes. Us. Thanks for joining us this morning. So it looks like a big event's going on April 2nd at the Rochester High School Auditorium. Michael Winslow is going to be joining for a family friendly comedy show. Yes, and I, now I know you can't believe everything you find on the <laughs> internet, but I did some searching on Michael Winslow and just have a few little trivia or tidbits for you okay. if I might. Yes. Tanner inspired me. Um, the Police Academy movies, if you're a little older like I am, you grew up in the era. Their first uh, a Police Academy movie came out in 1984. Um, they actually did seven movies. Uh, I'm pretty sure I only saw the first one, and it was that probably 38 years ago. I didn't watch any of the other ones. One of the things I found interesting, if it's true, apparently uh, this character that Michael Winslow played was not in the original script, but the casting director saw him at a comedy show and said, we have to write him in. Hmm. So that's an interesting yeah. step into fame. So I thought that was kind of cool. 
Yeah, he is a comedian and a voice instrumentalist. Voice instrumentalist, and I saw that they said he he is saying he can actually recreate any sound that man can hear. Wow. Um, I don't know if that's really true, but he says it's now in the tens of thousands of voices mm. and sounds that he can recreate. That's impressive. Um, mm. I don't know if you'll have time to do all of those things while he's here. I think that'd be the whole show, plus some if you just did all of yeah. those. Yes. He was also in the uh, movie Spaceballs, which is a comedy spoof off Star Wars. Yeah. Like, yeah, I haven't seen that. Seen One of that. my favorites. Um, and he was recently on America's Got Talent, which has to do with our trivia question this morning. I appreciated that. And if you have time, I think people should Google the Google machine. <laughs> um, I did that. His audition was last summer, and it's very heartfelt. You find out why um, he dropped out of Hollywood, and that was for family. So... Um, he's wanting to just come back and, and make time for himself. It's his time, as he said. So if you have a moment, you should look that up. So how did this event come along? Who kind of spearheaded this idea? Well, I think that's why Maddie and I are here together. Now, I will say, the first thing she told me is, Mom, don't embarrass me. <laughs> and I couldn't promise her that that wouldn't happen. Yeah. Um, Saya Yodazai, you probably know us as the cheese ball ladies. We sell flowers. We do the father-daughter dance, which is quite popular. We were hosting and sponsoring the Fort Wayne Philharmonic Holiday Pops concert the Saturday after Thanksgiving every year, which was very nice. It was very expensive. That cost us about $16,000 every year. Well, then the high school auditorium needed remodeling, so we didn't have a place, and the concert was canceled that year. And we, as a sorority, thought we should look into other ways to spend money and maybe have more outreach or more opportunities. So I am here in the capacity of the new committee chair, Cultural Arts, and our goal, there were five or six of us, um, what can we do in the community and maybe not spend as much money but still have greater impact? So we came up with an idea to do three or four different events each year uh, with the idea of them all being family friendly. That was important to us. So the first thing we did was a Ross puppet show. Um, what's exciting about that is it was a free show, so there was no charge, and we had this gentleman come in. I was not able to see it. I was not available, but he comes in and does fun things with puppets. So fun. He At the end of each show, he um, brings out the puppets and lets the kids kind of see how they operate, um, and I think he even allowed some of them to operate them, cool. so they had a lot of fun with that. So we had two shows that we held for free, one at the library during the day and one in the high school auditorium. And then most recently in December, we had a uh, South Bend Symphony String Quintet come. Um, because of some uh, scheduling issues, that was held at Faith Outreach Church, and it was beautiful. They did uh, holiday music. That was very nice. That was, again, free. The South Bend Symphony does that outreach for free. So we love giving uh, opportunities culturally that are free to the public. Well, the third one, I don't know if it was your idea, yeah. which is why she's the committee <laughs> chair, or the event chair, but tell us about this next one. Um, so this one, again, our committee just worked hard on trying to figure out something that the whole family can do, not just directed at the adults or the kids, um, but something the entire family could do. So um, there again on the Google machine, um, <laughs> found a company uh, that gets you in contact with a comedian, and they gave me a list of uh, family-friendly comedians, um, and then a very small list of celebrity comedians. And when I saw the list, I'm like, okay, we have got to do this. Um, who would have thought that, you know, little Rochester is bringing in a celebrity? So, uh, yeah, so we decided as a group that that was the best way to go, and he was our best option for the family-friendly effect. Uh, I think the kids will get a kick out of all the sounds and noises he makes, so I think it'll be fun. I was going to say, what set him apart from those other comedians that you were trying to choose from? Truly, it was the family-friendly. Um, there were a couple other comedians uh, that, in my mind, from what I've seen them on, are not quite family-friendly. <laughs> yeah. So they would have been great and fun for like an adult's night out. A little different environment. Yes, <laughs> but we definitely wanted the family-friendly. 
So, um, what what are the prices for tickets, and what what time does the show start, and all those details? So the show starts at seven o'clock on April second. Doors open at six fifteen. Uh, tickets are twenty dollars for adults, ten dollars for students, and five and under is free. Okay. Um, we do require tickets for all, whether you're free or not. That way, we can keep track of capacity. Sure, sure, makes sense. And there are going to be two comedians, just so you know. There is an opening act. We don't know who that is. Oh, really? Um, but it is the opening act, and then Michael. Okay. Yes. So, sounds like a fun night of comedy mm -hmm. in store. Um, what other events do you guys have planned this year? Well, I know you said you did the uh, father-daughter dance, which looked like a big hit. I mean, just on my Facebook feed. Uh, really, this past week, since a lot of them, I guess, are getting their pictures back. Yes. I've seen a lot of pictures, and it looked like everybody had a great time. That was really successful, and we had kind of a last minute, I won't say last minute, we changed the venue for that. It was beautiful. We're trying to find a good home for that that's good both for the size capacity, it gets warm, there's a lot of, you know, father-daughter dancing happening, sure. um, and finding a place where you can do your activities. So we're working on a great venue for that. The rest of the year, honestly, in terms of events for the community, we're probably back in the cycle. We'll be selling flowers here in May. That's one of our fundraisers. Um, probably then next would be, we're hoping to have the Ross Puppets show again. Um, the first couple things we did with this committee weren't necessarily really well attended. Part of that was marketing on our part, and part of it is just the first time you're doing something getting momentum and word out for that. So I think we're hoping to do that again in the fall. We'll be selling cheese balls come November. Uh, and we do hope to have the South Bend Symphony String Quartet or some Quintet or something similar to that back at, at the holidays. That's just such a beautiful time to have holiday uh, symphony music. So that's, I think, oh, and the uh, 0.5K race, I should throw that out there because that's a fun event. Now that is an adults event. Um, but that is a fundraiser, um, and if you heard me right, it was 0.5K, not 5K. Um, I think it's, what, half of a city block? Yes, half a city block. <laughs> so even I could do that <laughs> successfully, and that's a great fundraiser for us, too. So we're working on uh, getting that done, I believe, this fall as well. Very busy is what I'm hearing, which yes. is good. Yes, Which is good. So we're talking with Kim Benzing and Madison Jackson this morning of not only First Federal Savings Bank, but they're representing Sayo Desai with their uh, family-friendly comedy show coming up on Saturday, April 2nd. Uh, any other details that the community should know about that event? Yeah, so um, to purchase tickets, there's a bunch of different ways to do so. Um, you can purchase them at the Rochester Sentinel. Uh, by contacting any SIO Design member, um, you can call or text my phone number, which is 813-981-2532, or you can even stop by First Federal Savings Bank, um, and everyone in the lobby pretty much knows what's going on, so just tell someone you want tickets. <laughs> tell somebody you want tickets, and somebody will take care of it. Yes. So, and how many... Uh, Members, I hope that's the right word, uh -huh. uh, the Sion as I here have. We're actually one of the bigger chapters, believe it or not, and I think right now we're at 28. I looked yeah. at that wow. last night. Wow. Um, we have some chapters that are four and five members. Wow. Um, and we are a philanthropic sorority, which is a very fancy term for uh, we get together simply to make money to give back to the community, but we do have fun doing it. Um, I've been in now, I think I'm on year 25. I tried doing the math on the way here. I've met so many women that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, we have fun while we're doing it, and we're always trying to, as a matter of fact, tonight we're having a meeting for our annual budget to figure out what we want to do to make money. Um, I think what we have now is, is working, um, but we always want to make more money. Right now, uh, this new year, starting May 1st, we want to give out just over $12,000 um, in the areas of art, music, literature, and speech and hearing. Those are our areas of philanthropy. So we really love giving money back to the community um, because the community is special to us and that's just why we're doing it. So, And if we can also en enrich and give things that people usually have to drive an hour out of town to do, well, that's quite a blessing. So. Right, right. We have to stay local if we can. So. That's right. Well, thank you both for everything you do for Sayo Design and 
thank you to Sio Zai for everything they do for our community. Yes. Well, now, if I may. Yes. In the spirit of the comedian, I brought in two jokes to get you ready, get the comedic okay. juices flowing. Okay. So, number one, two goldfish are in a tank. One looks at the other and says, "You know how to drive this thing." <laughs> 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 Never heard that one before. <laughs> Neither have I, but it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. It's one in my back pocket. And and this one, my second and final. What's orange and sounds like a parrot? I don't have any idea. A carrot. <laughs> okay, so I said that because that is a low bar. I am not a comedian, so you definitely want to come see a professional, Michael Winslow, on Saturday, April 2nd. And I promise the comedy will be much better than that. Oh, Michael, not that yours is bad, because I know how good his is. <laughs> well, thank you both for joining us this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you, you very much for having us. And you can now uh, take your stab at the uh, trivia question, if you'd like. I've got a feeling more than these two actually <laughs> I told what, Madison I was sorry I didn't research this last time. <laughs> In what year did America's Got Talent begin? 2002, 2004, 2006, 2008. Paul, why don't you go first? 2006. You know, my first gut instinct was 2006. I'll say 2008. 2006 hey! is correct. Hey! I should have gone with the majority. American Idol started in 2002. That's where 2002 that one came I knew. from. That one I knew because I knew yeah. it was right as I started high school. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, 2006. I would have thought it was newer than that, to be honest. I'm yeah. surprised. Yeah. So, let's close on some words of wisdom from Bertrand Russell, who was a British philosopher. The time you enjoy wasting is not wasted time. Those are great words of wisdom. I thought so. Yeah. Thank you guys very much, and uh, we'll see you again next week right here for the first We'll be program. here. Thanks, Paul. Thank you guys.